With the release of the September 2023 ban list, no doubt our competitive players trying to look for what the next best decks are and what decks are viable. And if you're looking for that, then you've come to the right place. What's up guys, this is TCG Sam here, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over what I personally feel are the 25 most represented or uh, played decks of the next uh, September 2023 format. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, then be sure to let me know by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. But with all that being said, let's just hop straight into it. So just going over the tiers quickly, uh, the decks to beat are obviously the top decks, the ones that you should be preparing for no matter which tournament you go to. Uh, so these are just the best of the best in the format. Competitive contenders are decks that you should respect, but aren't necessarily going to be the most played out there, um, but you're still going to see them at doing well at big tournaments. Next up are rogue contenders. So these are the decks that are sort of more niche, and you might not see them at every tournament you go to, but they're still decent decks that can still compete with the format. Either they just need a lot of good luck to go their way, or they need a very skilled pilot. And then finally, just decks that are not good. So I think these decks just shouldn't really be played this format or they're just better options out there. So getting into the tier list, first we're going to have Kash Tira. So of course, Kash Tira or Riseheart got hit. And I'm going to just say right off the bat, I don't think this deck is good anymore. Of course, the deck can still play cards like Dimension Shifter, which is very oppressive. But now the problem is, what sort of end board are you going for in your Kash Tira deck? Yes, you can end on cards like Shangri-Era, the Field Spell, and like Fenrir Unicorn. That's probably the extent of what you're ending on. And that type of end board is just okay at best. At best, it's like a Unicorn Rip, a Fenrir Banish Face Down, a Shangri-Era Zone Lock, and a Pop. But that's assuming you've opened the Field Spell as well. So I really don't think this type of deck will be that oppressive or that good. They're definitely just better shifter decks out there and decks out there, period. So I don't think you should be really too worried about Kashtira uh, in the near future. Next up is Branded Despia. So Branded Despia uh, originally never had a terrible matchup against uh, Kashtira to begin with. And the fact that Kashtira left the format, I don't really think changes much for the uh, Branded deck. Uh, Magma to 1 could sort of help it because if people were siding Bistios before, now they have a few less options uh, to put in their side deck. So I think I'm going to put the Branded Despia in the competitive contender tier. Uh, this is definitely a very good deck still. could still do the Puppet Lock. And it's still a pretty strong deck. Brand Infusion is still an insane card. But the only thing is that's preventing me from putting it any higher is that, yes, Ash Blossom is still a thing. And I think that Ash Blossom might be played a lot more this format. So Brandon Despia still has, uh, is sort of caught in the crossfire. And as people switch their tech cards over from beating Kashira, so like playing less books, they might be playing more cards like Bistials and whatnot now, which would hurt uh, Brandon Despia more. So I'm going to put this at like the bottom of competitive contender. Next up is Infernoble Knight. So Infernoble Knight did get top 8 at the YCS uh, Vancouver, but I personally don't think this deck is that great of a combo deck. It's definitely able to put up some good boards, but I think the issues with it is that it's just, as a combo deck, there are just better ones out there. I think it's definitely a good deck, don't get me wrong, but I don't think that this is the best option for combo decks out there. Uh, I'm going to put this at the, near the top of Rogue Contender. I think this is a very decent deck and a scary deck still that can definitely catch you off guard. Especially with cards like Neo, Space Shin, Aqua Dolphin, just ripping cards out of your hand can be really good. Um, but I just don't think that this deck will be seeing that much play unless the format shifts in a way such that uh, less hand traps are played or uh, certain board breakers are played that this deck just beats. Next up is Sky Striker. So Sky Striker, I've never really loved this deck. I don't think this deck is particularly great, uh, especially the going second build where people are actually trying to go second. Strategies like that are just not only pretty easy to play around, but also just are very risky. Your opponent could easily set up things that your engine just can't break itself. And I think for that reason, I'm gonna put this at the not good category. I really don't think this deck is very good. Maybe a very skilled pilot can do decently well with it, but I think at the end of the day, um, this deck is just not that good and there are better options out there. Next up is Fluanderies. Uh, so putting aside my personal bias against this deck, I do think this deck is uh, pretty decent. It has a solid Unchained matchup, which I think is like the biggest thing going for it. Um, just the fact that you're able to play cards like Shifter as well and Featherstorm. These are very ignorant cards that beat a lot of decks out there. But also, like I mentioned, just having that good matchup against Unchained can be huge because Unchained is probably the deck to beat. Uh, and you're going to run into it a lot. And Fluanderies is just one of those decks out there that 
just you can play so many of those broken cards in it i think for that reason i'm have to put it at the very bottom of competitive contender as much as it pains me to do so i do think this deck has some potential this format uh, aside from its own consistency issues we still have three pot of prosperity three pot of extravagance so they can still technically play as many of those consistency cards as possible so i think for that reason it'll still be consistent enough and enough of a threat that you should actually consider respecting it Next up is Labyrinth. Uh, so Labyrinth did get top 16 at YCS Vancouver. If you haven't checked out that deck profile already, then be sure to do so. You're checking out my channel. It's already up there. Um, but Labyrinth, you can play it as pure Labyrinth with Floodgates, just normal Trap Labyrinth or Unchained Labyrinth. There are a couple ways to play the deck, and I think all of them are fairly good. Um, Labyrinth is okay, I think, against the top decks of the format. It's just, in general, just one of those decks that not too many people put too much hate for in their side deck unless the format shifts a specific way with labyrinth you're able to play not only a myriad of different tech cards but you're also just not really being sided for a lot of the times and of course the labyrinth engine is still very strong once it gets going so i'm gonna have to also put this into the competitive contender i think this is definitely a deck you're going to run into if you go into tournaments next up is rescue ace so rescue ace it did also do quite well at the ycs it got top 16 i believe at one thing Vancouver. Rescue Ace, I think, is just a pretty solid deck overall. Uh, unfortunately, I think it has a very poor matchup against a deck like Labyrinth, and I'm not sure how good its Unchained matchup is. I haven't really tested that, but to me, it seems like Rescue Ace is probably just going to be a very okay deck. Um, it's not going to be particularly great, but it's definitely a deck that can still make some do some damage because of the different options it has when going first. You can end on Terahertz, you can end on Ibli, and these are just very powerful cards. Not to mention, of course, setting four from deck is very strong. So I'm gonna also have to put this in the competitive contender tier. I think it's a pretty solid deck that you should be watching out for when you're able to go to these big tournaments. Next up is Runic decks, so like Runic Variants, like Runic Naturia. I only put this here because the Runic cards didn't really get hit. Um, it was not very popular beforehand, and I've seen people testing like splashing Runics with like cards like Rescue Ace or Cashier now. And I think as an engine, Runic can be decent, but as like more of a standalone deck where your core engine is comprised of just Runic cards, like in Run Runic Naturia, I don't think this deck is going to be very good. I think it's a rogue contender at best. Um, it doesn't really have anything super great going for it at least off the top of my mind right now it's more so just the decent cards that can probably still compete despite being out for a while so i'm gonna just put in the real contender tier for now next up is manadium uh so manadium i think got a top 32 at ycs vancouver um, but in general, the way the format shifted, it actually benefits Manadium in the sense that people are switching off Drill now because uh, it just doesn't do anything against Unchained, and people are just typically playing a lower count of hand traps in their deck, which, which I think is very beneficial for a deck like Manadium. This deck is still just insane at going first and putting up either the Calamity FTK or just the big Synchro board. But of course, having played the deck, it can sometimes struggle going second, and I think for that reason, I'm going to just have to put in the Rogue Contender, at least for now until it gets its new wave of support in the next set. Uh, I think this deck definitely has a lot of potential and definitely will top regionals and YCSs here and there until it gets that new support and becomes more resilient. I think it's just the Rogue, uh, top of the Rogue deck, bottom of Competitive Contender. On a similar vein, uh, Synchron, uh, like Adventure, it's a similar idea as Monadium. Uh, really great going first, uh, can struggle going second, but the fact that people are switching off of ha more hand traps now can be very beneficial for, for Synchron, so I'm also putting the same tier as Monadium. Definitely a deck that's very scary, and if you find yourself playing against them and you don't have the ha appropriate hand traps, then you're not going to have such a great time. Now moving on to the Chimera deck, so this is just like any Chimera variant, um, so like Chimera Branded for example, I think it's a very good deck. Uh, it's very flexible um, and can play a lot of the non-engine, which is very important. This deck is probably still going to be a competitive contender. I'm gonna put it at the bottom uh, along with like Fluanderies. Definitely a deck that you still probably want to respect. But the fact that it gets checked by cards like Ash Blossom, Impermanence, and Dimensional Barrier, of course, prevent me from putting it any higher, I think. Uh, it does have quite a few weaknesses, and sometimes like you're just not going to see those one-card starters, and the consistency can be a problem. Next up is Dragon Link. So this was the other loser of the ban list. It did lose Chaos Space and Magma, which reduces its consistency. And I know you saw in the thumbnail I had this at F tier. Obviously, it's not F tier. I think that Dragon Link definitely did take a decent hit to its consistency. 
the deck was or was like semi consistent before. There were times where you wouldn't draw a normal summon or have like a baby dragon play or bestial play, and that was pretty bad. Um, and reducing that consistency a little bit more, I think, does hurt the deck. Um, but the fact is, a lot of the a couple of the pro players have been suggesting that Dragon Link actually has a decent matchup against Unchained, and from what I can see, it's okay as well. So I think that it has that going for it. Uh, I'm gonna just put this. At the very bottom of competitive contender, very top of rogue contender. I guess I'll put this at the top of rogue contender for now, just because I'm not sure how many people are actually going to be trying to play the deck now that it's gotten hit. Obviously, it's still playable, but are now the question is, are there better options out there to play other than uh, the dragons? So next up is a uh, Salm Great, or just in general like the Cyber decks, so like Marinces and like Mathmech as well, sort of like are lumped together with Salm Great. Uh, even though Salamangrate did get Gazelle back to 3, which is a huge boost to the deck, I don't think this deck is going to be that great. Difficult going second, uh, pretty good going first. Um, but Salad is the type of deck that relies more on non-engine in terms of like Gwen going first. So seeing those floodgates like Rivalry and, or Goes and Match, as opposed to like Synchron or Menadium actually having engine to put up very good boards, if, even if they don't draw any non-engine cards. I think Salad's still going to be a decent deck. I'm gonna have to put it in like the middle of Rogue Contender. Uh, it's definitely a okay deck. And all these cyber decks are okay because they're all like one card combo decks. They have a bunch of non engine slots, which which is very good. But I think that with cards like Nibiru probably becoming more popular in this format, these do get hit in the crossfire because these decks just don't really have a good way to play around that card. So I think they're just gonna be checked naturally by Nibiru uh, in this format. And I think for that reason, I'm gonna just leave it in the Rogue Contender. Next up is Sprite, so like Sprite variants like Runic Sprite, uh, Fur Hire, or just like Melfi Sprite, just going second Sprite in general. Uh, I think that Sprite cards are still pretty solid um, in this format. They also have the um, non-engine thing going for them. They can play quite a few slots. The going first is decent. They can play cards like Ibley in their deck, which can be a nuisance for a lot of decks to deal with. I think I'm going to have to put this at the top of Rogue Contender. I really like this deck because it's very flexible and adaptable but i don't think it's particularly unfair now it doesn't do anything particularly unfairly anymore aside from maybe ibli so i don't think it's on the same level as some of these decks up here but definitely still a decent deck that you should be uh, watching out for when you go to these tournaments next up is hero usually sees like fringe play from here to there um, I never really thought that this deck was particularly good to begin with because just because of how like it spends so much just to not really do that much. <laughs> it's like the almost the definition of like do nothing turbo in a sense. Yes, you can end on cards like DPE and Dark Law, but I personally just don't really believe in this deck. I will put it at like the bottom of Rogue Contender just because Dark Lock and Dark Angel can win games on their own, but I just don't think this is going to be doing super well at a big tournament unless the player gets very lucky. Next up is Gold Pride Punk. Uh, so Gold Pride Punk is one of those decks that does benefit from Troll not really being in the format anymore or being less popular. Um, I think the boards it ends on are okay, but a lot of decks can actually just play through them. And going second, it has like similar issues as well as like the other combo decks i really don't think this deck is very good i'm gonna put it at like the top of not good and the bottom of real contender perhaps i'm underestimating it but i just remember this deck was very hyped at the start but just didn't really have too many results uh, behind it to really justify how good it was and then next up is unchained uh, without a doubt the deck to beat there's just really nothing to say about this it was pretty much becoming the deck to beat even when cash was around it's so resilient and just has such strong grind game and such strong boards as well and just doesn't really get hit by too many hate cards so definitely one of the decks to beat next up is sword soul uh sword soul is always like okay in my opinion it's like playable essentially in every single format it's versatile and flexible enough its end boards are always like okay enough uh where it's able to get away when uh going first and the only second, it has some pushes with like the 10 years. It's like just the very middle of the pack, like decent deck. I'm gonna put this at like near the top of Rogue Contender. I think it's a very uh, solid deck and a very safe deck option because there's not gonna be too much hate aside from like Nibiru, which unfortunately does sort of check this deck as well. Um, but if Nibiru just isn't as popular as I imagine, I think this deck could see some success. Next up is Rika. Uh, Rika is also one of the decks that benefit 
from hand traps just being less popular, uh, at least in my head. Uh, it's able to put up some pretty nasty uh, boards when going first. Uh, it has very nasty cards like Rika Kon Kon, which can just tear apart an Unchained board by itself. So Rika Kon Kon, the fact that that is a card is just very scary. And a lot, like, you just have to respect it uh, when they play it down. I think that uh, the fact that you're able to have very strong going first, you're not really hindered as much by uh, the non-engine out there, aside from maybe Nibiru. And you have um, some going second options. I'm gonna put this like near the top of row contender as well. I definitely think this is still a, a deck that should be respected. Uh, you should be playing, I think at least uh, maybe some cards that can beat this. So like evenly or something like that. I think this deck is gonna do okay this format. Next up is tier elements. Uh, and, and I realize now I've put tier elements twice, but essentially tier elements um, I put here because cashier did get hit and Kestura is pretty much like no longer a factor. That's one less shifter deck you have to worry about. Now you essentially only have to worry about a few decks out there actually playing the Dimension Shifter, which means Tyrk might have a very good time this format. You can get going very quickly with just like a single card to mill a couple cards from their deck. It's just a very scary deck once it gets going. The only thing that's like maybe a problem for it is if people start setting Bistios for the Unchained matchup, then uh, tier elements caught in the crossfire and it might be pretty bad for the deck because now that you only have one name, it's very difficult if uh, even one or two of them get bestialed. So I'm gonna have to put this in like the middle of row contender as well. I definitely do think this is a solid deck and it does get helped a lot by um, Kestura leaving the format, but I don't think it's gonna go much higher than this. I think at best it's just gonna see a few tops here or there. And then next up is Pearly. Um, I really do think this deck is pretty solid. Um, I'm gonna have to also put this like as the decks to beat, just under Unchained. Uh, Pearly was one of those decks that was a little scary to play last format because of the hate cards sided towards Kashira, like the books and stuff. But now if people start switching off books, start playing more cards like Nibiru, Pearly gets helped a lot by that. And I think for that reason, Pearly is just gonna go up a little bit in its competitive viability and become one of the top decks out there. I do think that Pearly should definitely demand some respect in your side deck, whether it's books, kaijus, uh, and probably not Xyz Encore because Kashira is a thing anymore, but probably books or, or kaijus at the very least, or Herald of the Abyss for Triple Tactics Thrust, just so you have outs to the Noir just because of how strong it is. And then next up is Trap Tricks. Uh, the only reason I'm putting this here is because it's just normally a very budget-friendly deck and it's... A, a budget contender, but now that Kashira is actually gone, I think one of its best matchups is now low, no longer in the format. And for that reason, I just don't think it's a good deck at all. Even when going first, it's not its boards are not like impossible to play through. Um, it it honestly just isn't a very good deck. Like the I think the only reason you play it is because it's very budget friendly and it's very easy to understand and play. If you're trying to play competitively, I would not recommend playing this deck. Uh, next up is Exosister. So Exosister is in an interesting spot right now. Uh, if you look at like the top decks out there, there are a few decks that like manipulate cards out of their graveyard, but not too many of them actually like do it as often as a deck like Tier Elements, for example, or heavily rely on it. Uh, while Exosister can still sort of do stuff, even if your opponent doesn't move stuff out of the graveyard, the deck just becomes a lot worse. And if people start playing cards like Herald of the Abyss or Kaijus for like Pearly and Unchained, then this deck sort of gets caught in the crossfire. You're just not really able to do anything uh, afterwards because your traps also rely on you having that uh, monster. It is still, I think, good enough to put in Rogue only because it can play cards like Shifter. And Shifter can be just a very oppressive card that wins games on its own against some of these uh, decks out here. And then finally, I'm going to be talking about Vanquish Soul. So Vanquish Soul, I've always thought that this deck wasn't very good. Uh, I feel like it needed non-engine to actually be able to win a lot of its games. The cards like there can be only one, uh, for example, because like just the engine itself just doesn't seem good enough to win anymore. Now, particularly because the Book of Moon that you search is not really as good anymore because Kashira isn't uh, going to be a factor. But also at the same time, its regular end boards are just very mediocre. Now, that being said, I have seen people try to splash the Super Heavy Samurai engine into it to raise its ceiling a little bit, which can be solid as well, I guess. But then you start uh, opening yourself up to cards like Nibiru, which originally just would never have done anything against your deck. 
I think that's potentially a problem that might arise. Um, but the fact of the matter is, even though I don't think the deck is very good, it is quite flexible and a lot of people do seem to like it. Uh, and it can definitely just snowball very quickly as well, just like a deck like Fluanderies. So I think I'm gonna have to put this like near the middle of the Rogue Contender category. It's definitely still going to uh, do decently well, I think. I just personally don't think the deck is very good because of its reliance on non-engine, at least in my opinion. So that's going to do it for this tier list. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. If you think that um, some things were right, some things were wrong, uh, I'm happy to hear your opinions. Uh, do also stay tuned for the staple tier list video that's going to be coming out in a few days after this one where I'm going to be going over the top staples of the format and which ones you should be playing in your deck. So if you want to see that, then be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. But with all that being said, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.